And I just want to call our meeting to order and ask you to please uh, stand and, and recite the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome. We're glad that so many of the board members from the different organizations could join us today for this meeting. Um, there is a sign-up sheet that was over here in the corner. If you didn't hit that, please hit it on your way out. We'd appreciate it. Next item is to approve the minutes of our January 7th meeting. So moved. Thank, we, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? I'll just say that again, these minutes are rather short. We're taping this so that we can uh, kind of use the, the video as the record of these meetings. So it's a little bit more informative for people who might want to discover what happened at the meetings. So all those in favor of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? The minutes stand approved. So before you move on, can we do introductions? Next, we're going to do introductions, and I'd like to introduce Chad Pelichek. <laughs> Sure, I'm Chad Pelichek, the City Planning Director. Most of you know me, but I think if you can go around and state uh, your name and which organization or neighborhood you represent. So we can start over here. Uh, Brian Ward, uh, Desert Christian Park. Engineering, City Planning, Chicago Park. Brian Ward, Desert Christian Park. Well, welcome everyone. Next, um, we're going to uh, introduce uh, Joe Curlin. Joe's our Director of Parks and Forestry, and he has a feature presentation on Adopt a Park. Joe, the floor is yours. Uh, red means go. All right. So this presentation, I got down to 45 minutes, so I'm glad you have some sandwiches and lunch. And No, I got it down to about three. So hi, everybody. Uh, adopt the parks. Um, I'm going to make sure I know what I'm doing here. And I obviously do not. Order from the beginning. What's that? Order from the beginning on the side show. Yep. Should be able to just uh, enter. There we go. Uh, technology, love it. If you use the arrow keys, you should be able to go through it with the up and down. Look at that. Okay. I don't do a lot of presentations, so thank you for bearing with me. All right. Adopt the Park Trail Program. Um, this program started in 2018, and um, basically the mission coincides with DPW's um, vision to provide volunteer opportunities for individuals and groups to take an active role that contribute to the beautification of local parks and trails. Um, go to the next one here. All right, we're gonna get this next time, let's practice. All right, all right. Um, uh, we want to increase uh, awareness uh, of the Sheboygan's 36 parks. This is the reason for having the program. Uh, encourage and recognize volunteers and contributions and efforts. Um, it's, it's amazing, I've been here seven years, it's amazing how much work 
volunteers put into our park system, but they're not being recognized for it. So, and, and it's happening all over the places, from beaches to Third Street, uh, plantings, everywhere you look, uh, Rotary Park, um, and people just grabbing a bag and picking up garbage. So this is a way to recognize people. Uh, develop an organization that promotes advocacy for parks and trails. Uh, this one of one of the things I love about my job. I work for the parks. People love the parks. All right. And so it's not it's not difficult to find people to advocate for the park. So, but it's just another way of doing that. Finding those groups that are going to help you out and and speak up when the time comes and hey, we would like to see this, you know, this playground, tennis court, whatnot. Um, build community pride in the parks. Um, again, came here seven years ago. Sheboygan should be very, very proud of their park system, what they have. I mean, I, I came here because of what I've seen. So it's a, um, Sheboygan's been very, doing very well. So 2019, we've had some, uh, in 2018, we took on three new adopted parks. 2019, we took on another three. A, a great uh, a group, business, RCS. Um, they adopted a portion of the Shoreland 400. And then you can see by the picture here, they also have a, a resting area. If you've been on that part of the trail that goes right by their property, um, that is open to the community. So they've done a wonderful job. They'll keep their areas clean and then and bring a snack, lunch, whatever, bike ride, take a rest. They have a beautiful mural of the, um, of the, of a, the lake setting also. Uh, another great uh, a group that just adopted, and I see that they're here today, Friends of North Point adopted uh, uh, North Point Park. Um, on, this, uh, on this slide, you can't read it, but tomorrow night, I'm going to put in a plug star. Tomorrow night at the library um, is a presentation on why you should be concerned about pesticides. This group has put on educational sessions, uh, things that they are involved in and they'd like to see. They've had, I think this is the third of three things at the library. So um, that, that, is, that is wonderful coming from this neighborhood. And then they've done many, many beach cleanups. Um, they've uh, advocated for keeping the bluff areas clean. They've had an education night when we started doing um, bluff restoration. Basically, if you, if you noticed, if you drove by the Broughton Drive by the lake at all, you've seen this. Um, we cleaned out many, many tons of invasives along Broughton Drive, along that bluff, and we're gonna continue to do that. And it's being done the right way. Uh, bottom one, uh, Valorum North Point Neighborhood Association adopted Coal Park. Um, they had a, a, a kickoff, and what they're trying to do, what you see there is, is getting people involved in what you want to see happen at Coal Park. What, what could help beautify that park? What could help make that park to get better? What could bring more people to that park to socialize, to meet, to use it? So... Alone we can do little, together we can do much. Um, basically, city staff, whatever, whatever department, that, department that is, can do as much as they can. You know, there's only certain, certain hours in a day. And I'll, I'll be honest, right now, we're, we're basically maintaining. We're doing our best to maintain our parks. Yep, we're, we're looking at them. We've got five-year plans. We're trying to improve. But my maintenance, my crew basically, basically is out there just trying to keep up with what it's got. You know, we have 36 parks. I mean, I can't remember how many bathrooms we have and, and shelters and just keeping those up on a daily basis. We're just trying to hang on doing that. So why am I saying this? Together we can get much done. All right, much more done. And that's, that's what this is all about right here, you know. Um, volunteers coming together and saying, hey, I live in this community, I live in this area, I wanna see this done, I wanna help out, I just don't wanna say, hey, we should do this, we should have this. People are out there actually doing things, making things work, fundraising. We'll get to, uh, we'll get to one in, in just a future, a group that's just doing amazing work, fundraising, grant writing, and, and turning a small piece of park into a, just a, a beautiful area, so. 
So who's put all this together? We've got to give some recognition. Um, city police officers, neighborhood police officers, been doing a great job. Nancy, the planning department, um, the gals at my front desk at DPW, um, everyone you see here, Dean. Um, so the, the kickoff year 2018 was a huge kickoff year. And I, I had been doing some research on Adopt the Parks and, and yep, you know, it's cool. I found other examples. We'll, we'll put it out there. We'll get groups that wanna, you know, pick up garbage, things like that. And, but this group right here, they came together. Um, they really, they went way further than I ever saw this program going. So uh, big recognition to everybody here. Upcoming adoptions. Maybe this year, maybe the next, but ones we definitely see. The first one is, is what I was referring to. This group has been working together since I believe it was 2015 was their first meeting. They just started construction last year, the Sheboygan Peace Park in Deland Park. Uh, grant writing, fundraising, you can, you can, uh, rent one, you can uh, purchase one of those bricks, put whatever you want on it. Um, just a phenomenal, jo phenomenal job. Uh, talk about a group that has gone through so many stages working together and, and you know, people leaving, people coming on. So um, hopefully that, that's going to be a no-brainer uh, for adopting that area. Uh, a couple associations we hope to see possibly this year, Adopt Parks, the End Park area, Park and Northeast Park. And then Evergreen Park, we have Rotary Clubs of Sheboygan looking at adopting it. That makes sense, making spirits bright and uh, some trails within the park. We have biking clubs looking at adopting some areas there. Uh, key contacts would be Nancy and myself at this time. And how to get going. Uh, we don't quite have this on our website yet, but you can contact one of us and we can get this program out to you. So I cut it down from 45 minutes to about, what, seven? So leave some time for uh, some questions if we have any. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Joe? Go ahead over here. Wait a minute. Okay, we should. Wait. M microphone's uh, coming. Wait the microphone. <clears throat> I'm curious. Push it up. Uh, it's not. Is it, can you hear it? Okay. <clears throat> I'm curious because I've lived here like 20 years and over 20 years, and I noticed. I'm specifically thinking, ah, yes. I'm specifically thinking of um, Fountain Park, um, how it used to have a lot more bushes in it. Is, it. is that something, if you adopted the park, you could add more bushes? Certainly. Um, anytime you adopt a park, you'll be working directly with me, you'll be working with Nancy. Um, uh, landscaping is definitely one of the things that we'd be happy to have you look at. Yes, we are going to say yes or no two things um, because we're gonna be looking at it, you know, from an improvement point of view, but for also from a maintenance point of view, but definitely landscaping can be part of this adopt the park How many, uh, uh, how many groups will you allow to adopt parks or how many parks will you allow in the program per year? Well, to, to get things going, we were just trying to shoot for three. Um, this year, uh, I, you know, I think we could do three or four, possibly. Um, I mean, we want to keep it small, keep it growing small. We want to be able to work with each group. I mean, it, it does take time, uh, each, each one of these. So we, we wouldn't want to bring on a dozen at a time. So we'll, we'll keep it around the three or four mark at first. <clears throat> so what if you adopt a park our association would adopt a park what kind of responsibility would that mean for us like what would our duties be like what yep first of all that, that's all in this program but really simple um minimum we'd ask you to have uh, turn in two dates that you're you're performing some kind of park project, you know, 
and it can be as easy, we're gonna go through the park and we're gonna clean it up this spring, all right? Or we are gonna turn in requests to put in uh, some plantings, you know? Um, so it can, really can range. Cole Park is really looking at a, a wide variety of different things that they'd like to do. Um, so it, it really, it just has to be accepted as a, a, a project. And the other thing is after a group decides, we're gonna be putting a sign up in the park and identifying that group as adopting that park as well. So you'll get some recognition right at the park as well as uh, in the other programs that Joe does promoting this effort. And I gave you the minimum, you know, obviously I'd love to see, you know, especially during the summer months, a group walk through once a, once a month, go through things. If you see things that need to be fixed or, or you know, um, contact us, do a general cleanup. You know, I'd, I'd love to see you in the park once a month during the summer doing something. But it, we only ask that you at least give us two, um, two projects that are written down. Any other comments or questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate right. that. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to our second program, which is a pres uh, presentation about Activate, a group that uh, has a program called SOUP, uh, Support Your Urban Projects. So who's going to be presenting this one? Yep. <clears throat> Please. Why don't you take the extra microphone up there too, just in case. Hi, thank you guys for letting us be here today. My, my name is Alec Bardley. I'm the treasurer of Activate. And Activate is a recently formed new pro, uh, nonprofit, soon to be 501C. Um, our mission is, is really to activate the community, to try to get ideas in motion, um, make our community a better place to, to live. And ultimately, we put on a number of events throughout the year. Uh, the key event that we have is, is support our urban projects. We call it SOUP. It's an idea that came out of uh, Detroit, and the, the mission was trying to make Detroit revitalize the city um, make communities a better place to live. And we're on soup number seven at this point in time. Um, soup is, uh, I think we started in 2017. 2017. We put two soup events on each year. And we have an upcoming event, uh, April 30th. And the reason why we wanted to talk to the community associations is we really think you guys have a great opportunity to submit ideas for soup to uh, really make your communities a better place to live and to, to, to be. Um, we've had a number of uh, neighborhood associations submit over the last seven soups. Um, I think uh, Peace Park submitted. Um, we had uh, a couple ideas around the winter activities. Um, I don't know. Voirath North, yep. Um, and so ultimately, the, the idea today is how can we get uh, community associations to continue to submit uh, projects um, for the event and ultimately try to put some money in your pocket to help uh, put those ideas in motion. So we, we do have uh, some flyers I think we've handed out here. Um, our soup event is April 30th. We're having it at UW Sheboygan Green Bay, uh, 6 to 8. Um, we currently have a uh, four, possibly five submittals, but we're always looking for more submittals. Uh, the great thing is that uh, we, we've never really kind of tapped that, that out. We, we typically have only gotten four or five, and, and we're really hoping to have 10, 15, as many ideas that we can kind of support. Um, ultimately, we, we try to top, pick the top uh, six or seven that we think are the most, kind of hold the most weight. Um, each uh, idea has exactly five minutes to present at the event, and really it's kind of a, a crowdfunding pitch. You, you, you give your elevator speech for your idea to make your community a better place. We typically have somewhere in the range of 150 to as much as 300 people in the room. 
Each person pays a $5 donation, and at the end of the night, they get a ticket to vote for the idea that they think uh, holds the most weight. And whoever wins the most, uh, or wins the most tickets, gets the pool of money. But the great thing is, uh, we've had a number of ideas that did not win uh, actually get implemented as well. So really, the, it's a, it's a no-lose situation. You get to present your idea to a group of 150 to 300 people. Um, you get a, 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 a kind of a group of your colleagues in the room to hear um, how, you know, the, your specific idea. If you win, great. Typically, it's somewhere in the range of $1,000 to $2,000 uh, that we were able to raise. Uh, but we've also had a number of people who haven't won who've just been able to organically in that room uh, get the resources needed to, to implement. All right. My name is John Dolson, part of Activate and on the SOUP committee. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that are submitted, for ideas that you can vote for. And the more people in the room, the better, because then the word gets out of what we need to do in Sheboygan, whether you are voting for the winning project or not. But we've had seniors, retired people submit ideas. We had a nine-year-old girl submit an idea for um, a year-round bike park for kids. The police officers do it once or twice a year. They do it in a playground somewhere, and they come and learn how to handle their bikes crossing the street. Uh, they ride across a ladder, for example, to get the feel of how it, it's uh, to ride over bumps and things like that. And uh, the girl came up with an idea to, hey, why, why would you just do it twice a year? Why don't we do this permanently somewhere? Uh, there was an 18-year-old gal that pitched an idea for a mural on the side of a building. And if you've driven by on 8th Street, above and beyond, there's a mural there. Now. <clears throat> Her project, I think she got eleven or twelve hundred dollars from the soup event. Obviously, it was more uh, to put that mural up there. Might have been sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Who knows? But <clears throat> it was the impetus to help get support, talking to the board members, the executive director there, and making it happen. So it doesn't matter whether your project is in need of dollars or materials or people. Or do we have to get connections with the city? Is it dealing with something other than uh, private property where we need more players involved? We can help make those connections. Um, so those are some of the ideas, the range of people that submit the ideas. And um, we'll continue to do it as long as we get ideas submitted. So go check out Activate Sheboygan, active, the, the numeral eight, sheboygan.com. And um, you want to add anything, Jordan? <clears throat> um, so I'm new to Activate into Soup, but um, just you know, being a part of it and seeing, like John said, the range of different ideas and the, the, the variety of people that come and present to these things, it's a great opportunity for anybody to pitch an idea that they may not have the opportunity to, to pitch or to you know, talk to a group of people about. So. Yeah, spread the word, spread the word to the neighborhoods that you're a part of, and we'd love to see this be the biggest turnout ever. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Comment? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We get area <laughs> restaurants to donate soup. Um, uh, Texas Roadhouse donates salad and rolls. But that, you know, that's not the, the main part. It's... Uh, in, in Detroit, where it started, <clears throat> there was a lot greater need for abandoned buildings, brownfields, things of that nature, and they did a grassroots effort to try to do something. Our, we're fortunate. We, we, we don't have that. We don't have empty, abandoned city-owned buildings or brownfields all over the place like they did there. Uh, so we're just, it's the ideas that come from the people that live here. How do you want to make Sheboygan better? The last uh, Activate, uh, or rather soup that you had, you identified the project in Evergreen Park. Could you describe that a little bit? Uh, oh, <coughs> sure. Go ahead. No, I think you probably know a little bit better. Um, there's, there's if, if I'm, I don't have all the details, because uh, I wasn't presenting, but I was there. And there's a gentleman that is um, involved in mountain biking. <laughs> there is a lot of interest in making the trails out at Evergreen Park park better. Uh, there's a lot of dead-end trails, apparently. Um, 
two-way traffic, which I'm told is dangerous, uh, the higher level you get in uh, your ability in mountain biking. And so there is a push to have a <clears throat> uh, plan done by an uh, internationally recognized group, come in, put up uh, signage, uh, clearly designate trails, do, do some more work, uh, eliminate the dead ends, things of that nature. Um, and that was the idea that, that won. The group to come in, I think it might have been $5,000 or something of that range to get this group to come in. They only got fifteen or $1,600 from the event, but it was seed money to help them go forward with that. That group is talking with the city, the city parks group, to make it happen. Um, and then there's, there's also interest. That was the same di uh, day that the nine-year-old girl pitched the idea for the kids' bike park. So there might be uh, um, more support from the, the gentleman that won to get their group and actually do both projects. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Nancy? Microphone. <coughs> Thank you. Even if you don't have an idea to pitch, which this is like seriously easy money, it's five minutes of your time. Um, the event is really fun, and it's really fun to hear the other community ideas and feel that camaraderie. So if, even if you don't have an idea, you're not ready to pitch your idea yet, I would encourage you to attend the event on April 30th because it's just an interesting thing to do, and it's always good energy and positive vibes at the soup events. And there's soup. Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And then, Nancy, if you'd pick up that microphone again and tell us a little bit about the grant application program. So last year we did a, a neighborhood mini grant, and Valrath North Point has installed their project. The, the brochure holders in, um, currently they're only in Valrath Park on the shack, but there will be another one installed this spring, um, which has been a terrific project. But we have retooled this grant application a little bit for this year. We wanted to open it up to more of a rolling application and not put a deadline on it because we don't want you guys to, to rush to find a project just to fulfill a grant requirement. We'd rather have the opportunity for you to apply for the grant when you're ready to apply for the grant and really work through your projects, come up with some good ideas. So we're just gonna hand out the applications. I'll have them here if you're interested. Um, pick them up, otherwise we can bring them to your meetings the next time we come. Um, we have lowered the amount to $500, but if you have a project that's really interesting to your group and it costs more than $500, come and talk to us. We're, we will see you. <coughs> if it's interesting um, and see what we can do. And you can apply for soup and get more money. Um, but so this, the categories are the same, neighborhood organizing, neighborhood beautification, neighborhoods and schools celebrating partnerships and professional services. So the adopt park program <coughs> is the perfect place to use this grant. Um, other organizing efforts, I know we always talk about needing to get members and to get board members. So if we have any creative ideas that come out of your groups to try and attract members and get things going in your neighborhood, that's something we can talk about with this grant too. So I have the applications in the front and feel free to pick them up. Chad, you had a comment? <clears throat> yeah, I just wanna say that we're funding this out of a different source this year. So we're a little bit more flexible in what we can do. So on the point that Nancy made that if you have an event that you wanna you know, fund something that's other than actual an, an item, you know, like, you know, like if it's a get together or whatever that is, we have the flexibility to do that this year. So um, as some of you, we've had conversations in the past over the funding source with was federal black dollar, black grant dollars that kind of tied our hands, but this year it's city dollars. So we have a lot more flexibility in how we can use those funds. So any idea is a good idea. So are you saying that uh, social events are included? Well, we, we have hot dogs. Hey, hang on. If you have a creative idea, absolutely. If it's just the same block party that you throw every year, it's hot dogs. 
Um, we'll give you hot dogs and buns if you're having that social, Mr. Mayor. Um, but it, that stipulation was in the application last year, too. We're, we're trying to not fund the same projects over and over. We're trying to get new sort of innovative ideas going with this grant. So that's, that's the whole idea. But uh, one thing we are uh, funding again year after year is the, uh, the large item pickup. And I know many of you have picked your date and got everything organized for that. So we appreciate you participating in that again. And if your uh, organization, your neighborhood hasn't done it yet, uh, please talk to us. So we've had this question a couple of times. And a lot of you were like Johnny on the spot with your applications for the large item pickup, which is terrific. Um, the applications weren't due until, I think, late March. So while I think almost every single, I think, OK, um, almost every single neighborhood has submitted their application. Jeff was supposed to come to your meeting and talk to you about it. If he didn't, let's connect after this. OK, so that's why we had the application deadline be the end of March, because some groups only meet quarterly, and we wanted to make sure that we can talk after that if you want, if you want to. So, yes. so while many of you, I believe, this year are going to get either your first or second choice, we will release those dates as soon as we possibly can. They haven't necessarily been decided, finalized yet. You guys are good. I mean, if you really need to know, you can ask. Jason, but <laughs> so last year we collected 23 tons of uh, stuff and this year we want to beat that total So we appreciate everybody's participation in trying to break that goal um, And you might ask what is 23 tons? It's actually 36,000 pounds so It doesn't help, but it's better than saying how much is in a ton. So yes Okay, um, next we're gonna go on to the Neighborhood Roundtable and Nancy's gonna give us a little introduction to what we're looking uh, for you to bring up. So during the last meeting, we had a really good discussion that really centered around um, all of the neighborhoods struggling to find that sense of community and building um, a solid board that sticks with the program long-term. Um, and we can absolutely keep talking about that if we want to. Um, I think I'd like to start, if anybody has, so we, we do have some neighborhoods here who have taken on Adopt-A-Park projects. One of our first was Indiana Corridor. Dean and Pete are here. Um, who else has? Valrath North Point this past year has adopted a park. So since we have the adopt a park expert sitting here, if we have any questions for our fellow neighborhoods or concerns, or if you're considering your park or whatever, um, if we have any questions or comments for one another regarding adopt a park, I think this would be a great time to bring it up. Janet, could you pass the mic? Uh. If anybody can't think of anything that you would want to do in the park, what we did is that we uh, invited everybody in the neighborhood to come to the park. We picked a day, and Cal, uh, he laid out a big map, and we had post-it notes, and everybody put down something that they would like to see in the park, and the ideas were incredible and plenty, plenty of ideas. So that was uh, a really big success for us, was getting the input from the neighbors, people who... Uh, attend the park, you know, play in the park, whatever, but I thought that was a really uh, good idea. I just wanted to put that out there. It works. So I think that's a good point, Star. And piggybacking on our conversation last month, or two months ago, um, it's hard to get people interested. And a lot of times you have to have either a problem in your neighborhood or a big a big deal happening. I don't want to say a problem, but like the hospital memorial, that's a huge talking point for everyone. It's, it's really the glue in our organization right now. Um, so something like adopt a park and kind of having a rallying point, which could be the park, it's a really good opportunity to get interest in your organization and maybe find some people who would want to join your board or at least attend some meetings. So that's an idea for a way to get some support. Gateway. <coughs> That's great, but we need the people to be at the meetings in order to share this wonderful information. That's our biggest struggle is getting people to show up so we could 
talk about stuff. And I think Coal Park does the, or Valorath North Point had the meeting at Coal Park. Um, East Side, which is now called Historic Grant, who I don't think has a rep here tonight, holds their meetings in the summertime in the park. So not only does that like help have conversations about the park, but so right the the things that we've done that have been successful next door neighbor to neighbor contact yard signs worked really well in Indiana corridor <coughs> face some groups have a robust Facebook and some groups don't is there anything else that I've done and we have a section in the in the newsletter that we put out uh, you know for the neighborhood associations if you get us that information we'll be happy to add it to it as well <laughs> he, he loves flyers. He's volunteering himself to help your organizations hand out flyers in your neighborhoods. Um, sometimes having the meetings in a public place, too, that's really visible like a park, that's, I think, what helps with historic grant, too. The neighbors see the neighbors all going to this meeting. And there, there the, the park is a little more visible and kind of in the middle of the block. But um, sometimes that can help just having some visibility. We've been we've done door hangers where we actually have uh, had door hangers prepared, and we hang them on every single door in the neighborhood, and so people don't have the uh, can't say they've never heard or didn't get the information. We know they got it because we hung it on their door. Um, and not everybody comes, but at least they're they're notified. Now we don't do that all the time because it's a lot of work, but. It really does get the, if you've got a big event coming up and you want people to know about it, it's one way to make sure they all hear. The other thing is several of the, the neighborhood associations are having special events uh, at their meetings for a program on the new garbage collection system. And that really has seemed to brought a lot of people out because it's something that affects every pe person every week. You have to take care of that. And, um, and a lot of people are concerned and they want to know what it's going to look like and what options they have. So, you know, at a meeting, you might bring that up as your program. It, it might you know, add a little bit to it, talk to our Department of Public Works. They've been trying to attend all of those that they can. Some of the neighborhoods even got together and kind of brought all two or three neighborhoods together and, and did it and, uh, and kind of expanded their group for that one meeting. And not that it's very helpful because I know you want people from your neighborhood to go to your neighborhood association meetings, but some of the parks straddle more than one neighborhood, which can help spread the word a little bit and get a wider audience with the issues that you might be talking about. Um, in our neighborhood, we're, we're having a meeting coming up next week on our park, um, that's Memorial Neighborhood, and we're inviting the other surrounding neighborhoods that touch that park to come and talk to us about what's going on and what they wanna see. So then we can get their contact info, so they're also impacted by you know, the hospital and what's going on there and what other issues might come up so we can be inclusive when we have conversations that might affect them. So are there parks on the list for 2020 that are already taken or when you're thinking about what's coming up for this coming year, what's available? <coughs> So uh, 2020, really, really, other than um, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> thank you. Really, other than Peace Park, um, Ever, Ever, Evergreen, they haven't turned in an application yet, but that's a really good fit. And Evergreen's big enough park where where there can be more than just one adopt a park, you know, you, doing that. So really, so no applications have been turned in for this year. <coughs> Again, I'd really like to see, uh, you know, basically uh, neighborhood associations first, uh, you know, apply for their, apply for those parks in their, their areas. And it's interesting with Peace Park, that was just a part of Deland Park to begin with, and they created a whole new park for us with their project. Okay, anything else in this area? Whether it's park related or not? 
I guess uh, I just wanted to um, reiterate how we, what we did. We did a similar thing with, with the you did with the, uh, with, the, with, the with the with the post notes and things like that when we when we first adopted the park, and we're slowly implementing a lot of those things. I mean, some of the things are way out there that are going to take a lot of time and money and, and, and aren't going to happen overnight, but we'd like to see them happen someday. Uh, like, you know, we'd like to see a shelter in Moose Park someday of some kind, either an open shelter or even a closed shelter, depending on what, you know, comes out. But um, we're, 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 we're getting new playground equipment. The city is putting some money towards it, but we're also going to be going out to the community and like the, probably going to be at the soup maybe or just 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 after you uh presented this to me it sounds like a good idea for us to because we'd like to add more equipment than, than what um than what is you know what, what what we're able to come up with um we've also we we with our grant last year we put the money aside it hasn't been built yet but we're working on a, a um a uh a shelter for the for because it has a porta potty in in Moose Park right now, so we have, there's going to be a little shelter, so it's more of a permanent structure, so that you know less less likely to be da uh, damage of vandalism and things like that. So we're starting, we're just working slowly, building, 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 because you're not going to do all those things in one. And it also is kind of a rallying thing to work around. So, thank you. That's what Ted Dean has explained is a really good point, and Moose Park is a terrific example because it. I don't know, I had never been to Moose Park before their event at Moose Park. Um, it was a neighborhood park that had a few pieces, sort of outdated equipment. There was no bathroom. There was kind of nothing else at the park, a big field and some, and some playground equipment. Um, so they had a great conversation at their kickoff meeting with their community to talk about what's necessary to make that park a great asset for their area. And they identified a bathroom, and Joe, that's something that Joe was able to respond to really quickly, and he, he put a porta potty there so people could use the bathroom at the park. Some of the ideas are easy to respond to quickly, some of them need years of planning. Um, and, and that's something to work through with Joe is that it, not everything you come up with is going to be able to happen right away, but it's about prioritizing the needs of the neighborhood and the park. Um, and the resources of the city and the resources of the neighborhood and other funding sources to really make a great plan to eventually continue to make that park a great place. Moose Park is a terrific example. Joe and then Jed. Yeah, just to add to that, the Moose Park. Um, you know, you'll get people in the community that say, the city's not even looking at our park. Well, you know what? Until people started speaking up and, and advocating for that park, I didn't know anybody was using it to tell you the truth. So <laughs> it works both ways. You know, we're going to put, of course, we're going to try to put money into our bigger all community parks. But I mean, it, again, squeak a wheel. You, you got to let us know too. Hey, what about us? We've got people using it. We want to help. We want to be part of it. We want to see new things. That was... I don't know if we'd even have a playground coming this year if it wasn't for this neighborhood. Chad? So what I wanted to say was we um, recently finished in our office a sustainability guidebook, which is we will be rolling out to you guys probably at our next meeting um, on, on projects, sustainable projects that you can do within your neighborhoods, you can do within this Adopt-A-Park. And one of the thoughts on this that you know, comes to mind is like, you know, for a project in a park or even a, you know, not even adopt a park, but just working on a project in a park, if you didn't want to adopt the park, would be like a pollinator garden or a butterfly garden or a rain garden or a community garden. So there's a lot of options out there. Um, and we've got a lot of that documented in this how to guide that we will be rolling out to you guys so that you can pick it up and go and do some of these uh, nice cushy kind of sustainability related projects. And so if you're you know, considering adopting a park and there's things you wanna do but you just don't know what they are, hopefully this guidebook will help guide some of that if you wanna do um, some more like natural related stuff. So stay tuned, we're gonna, we, we've got it done and we're gonna roll this out to you uh, probably as a presentation at our next meeting um, and then g give you guys copies of the books to take back to your uh, respective neighborhoods. Thank you for that preview.
Well, with that, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, and that's a report from Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. Penny Weber's with us. Penny, can you pass the microphone to her? <clears throat> We are currently working with three neighborhoods meeting on a monthly basis. Of the three, two are going to be neighborhood associations within the next six months. So we did get that um, thing moving and we're very happy about that. The third one has a core group of people. They just started meeting. They must have three meetings in now. It's Cleveland Park. Um, so that has a real possibility to go forward. It's still early days, but it's exciting to see that there's a number three, at least in the wings. Who, who are the first two? <clears throat> Franklin Park and Keeney Park. Okay. Thank you very much, Penny. Any questions for Penny? Okay, and uh, at our last council meeting, uh, Chief of Police Chris Domogolski gave their uh, 2019 annual report to the City Council. We've made a separate video out of that presentation, so that'll be out on our, uh, our networks uh, soon if you get a chance, tune in. Um, you know, the, the police department's done a great job over the years. I think uh, Chris said that, uh, what, since uh, 10 years ago, uh, part one crimes have been reduced by 55%, which is just amazing. So, Chief, anything you'd like to add? No, please don't do it alone. It's the police and the community working together and citizens taking responsibility uh, for preventing crime where they can and at least understanding that they have to be focused on prevention, not just as crimes. And, you know, when Chris came to the city of Sheboygan, he promoted this new uh, type of uh, policing, community policing, and we worked hard to build up these neighborhood associations with your help to buttress that so they all work well together. So you're a big part of that picture, and thank you so much for what you're doing for Sheboygan and for being here tonight. And um, I just want to say that our next meeting is planned for May 5th, and we're planning on going to the water utility for a tour. And uh, right now the water utility is planning a uh, $31 million project to put a new water intake out into the lake. We have one intake that's out there that's over 100 years old. Another one was done in 1959. And we're afraid that that 100-year-old one uh, won't uh, last many more years. So we have to have another one in order to be able to suck enough water out of the lake to serve the needs of our community. And it's nice to have two of them in case one goes down, you have another one that can kind of uh, take over. In the past, when we had some really cold winters, uh, one of those has frozen up and we've had to live with just water from the other one. So we just want to make sure that we're ensuring we're going to have that resource for many years to come. So you learn a little bit more about that project as well as uh, the current operations of our water utility. With that, um, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much, and please stick around for a little camaraderie and, and have some cookies and some eats.